and welcome to this presentation titled Development of Different Types of Green Roofs and Green Walls for Urban Biodiversity and Green Climate Adaptation in Cold Climates. My name is Tobias Emerson and I am working as a researcher at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences and I have also just returned from a, a reposition where I have been based at Cinco in southern Germany in, in a, working in a joint project between Cinco Germany and the University of Sheffield in the UK. So in this product presentation I will tell you a little bit about the new developments that are taking place right now in Malmö and give you a brief insight into the Marie Curie project that, has, that is just about to finish in the coming months. So I'm based at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. It's located in Alna in southern Sweden situated in a, in a very nice old English park. We have our, I have my office in, in the old castle located on the campus premises. And uh, Malmö has been pretty proactive in development of urban green for quite some time. And they have been using a, a variety of different green techniques to improve the urban environment. They've been quite a lot of experience looking on green roofs, green walls, but also on other types of, of urban green systems. Approximately 15 years ago, Malmö had, had two flagship neighborhoods that they were developing uh, as a inspirational and a test area for, for green uh, technologies and green systems. One was uh, based in the Western Harbor area in Malmö, which is a newly de developed neighborhood, and the other one was the Augustenborg uh, neighborhood, which is an old uh, neighborhood that was refurbished to, to improve its uh, uh, environmental performance. So the Western Harbor area is a um, redevelopment or a brownfield development. It's, uh, it's situated uh, uh, close to the, to the seashore in an area which was used to be used for heavy industry for uh, it was a shipyard uh, industry which was a very important uh, industry in Malmö uh, in the 70s and 80s but uh, with the down oil crisis um, the shipbuilding industry suffered badly and finally went out of business so in the in the end of 1990s, uh, the city decided to, to redevelop redevelop this whole area into a ecological and sustainable neighborhood, uh, showcasing a lot of different techniques on, on urban green development. So within this project, there were a lot of new techniques being tested. Green roofs were installed for the first time on a large scale in Sweden, and that this was partly a result of a, a new test with different planning strategies. For example, in the Western Harbour, the city enforced a, a green factor system similar to what has been used in uh, Berlin with the biotope flesh and factor. This type of system has also been used elsewhere, for example, such as in Seattle uh, on the American West Coast. The idea of the Western Harbour was to to showcase different type of architectural styles and also to showcase different type of sustainable stormwater systems that could be installed in the newly developed and in, in, in modern neighborhood to act as a demonstration neighborhood for architects and technical consultants to, on an international scale to actually show this is what is possible to build if you have, an, have a high ambition. The Augustenborg area was the second eco-city development in Malmö and this was quite different from what was happening in Western Harbour as the Augustenborg neighborhood was already installed, it was in, built in the 50s and 60s so it was a existing neighborhood that was uh, redeveloped to improve its environmental performance. So this type of uh, na neighborhoods like the Augustenborg, they were really quite quite spacious development. It was seen as a housing area within a park. There was a lot of green space, a lot of outdoor areas, a lot of activities and in, in 
these type of neighborhoods were in many ways designed and built as a model na model neighborhood for the for the future of Sweden. There were a lot of a lot of ambition, a lot of ideals that were went into the design of these neighborhoods. The stormwater systems on the other hand were in many times designed as combined systems and with urbanization these uh, combined systems were receiving more water than they were originally planned for which meant that after heavy rain uh, basements quite often flooded in, in the Augustenboy area so it was seen as a necessity to improve the stormwater system and the city then decided to improve it by the use of uh, open stormwater system by the use of green roofs and other types of uh, of green solutions for a technical water problem. So there were quite a lot of uh, open canals installed, there were a lot of uh, dams installed to reduce the amount of water that was flowing through the system and act as a, as a buffer for after heavy rain. And one of the key components for the Augustenborg area was also the installation of green roofs. And in Augustenborg the city decided to to, do, to put a lot of effort into green roof development and that was done through the formation of a botanical roof garden on top of the city's own technical department within the Augustenboy area. So here there, there was a lot of investment in, in green roofs. Uh, this Augustenboy botanical roof garden was one of the first um, botanical roof gardens that uh, were built on a global scale. So it come from, it's a total of 9,500 square meters of green roofs and uh, the whole project was financed by the Swedish government, by the European Union and by the city of Malmö and uh, the aim was to showcase uh, different green roof technologies and to make it possible for people to come up and visit the green roofs and, and touch them and feel them firsthand to get an experience from how a green roof can look, can look over the year. From, from the start of the, the project, the research has been an integrated part of, of, of the activities that are taking place at the Botanical Roof Garden. There has been several PhD theses being published uh, with research that has been taking place on the Augustenboy uh, Botanical Roof Garden. I made quite, uh, quite a lot of my fieldwork on roofs that were on the botan botanical roof garden for, for my PhD. But there's, a, there's not only extensive green roofs, there's also uh, demonstrations for urban gardening, more aesthetically installed green roofs. There's quite a large installation on combination of uh, solar panels and green roofs and there's also combinations of photovoltaics and green roofs on, on the premises. So one of the latest projects that is linked to the Botanical Roof Garden is a project that's called Green Climate Adapt. And this is a project run by the, the city of Malmö with funds from uh, the European Union. And the basis for, for this project is that you are looking on how green surfaces and green areas can be used to improve um, the urban climate and especially how green areas can then mitigate some of the problems that are expected uh, to arise from a uh, coming uh, increasing temperature due to global warming. In this project we're looking at four different systems that are then explored to see how they could help uh, with improving urban green or there are more uh, four different cores in, in this program and the first one is uh, urban stormwater and in the, this project is look, we're looking at how urban stormwater can be designed and how um, you can work with daylighting of old uh, uh, streams that are being put in, into to pipes, how those uh, systems could be taken up uh, and reconverted into open canals or ponds and in turn how that would then influence uh, the ability of urban area to handle increased uh, precipitation due to a changing climate, for example. Uh, the second uh, component in this project is 
green walls. There is uh, quite a large research project looking on how green walls can be used in combination with uh, uh, photovoltaics to both produce energy and also to reduce uh, temperatures within the office buildings during the summertime. So here we're looking at both uh, install, installed uh, wall modules and climbing plants. The third uh, part is then looking on green roofs, how new type of green roofs can be developed and installed in more more uh, widespread use, how, how you can design them to, to get more access to a larger market. And finally it's also looking on dialogue processes, how people can discuss and how about these new types of green systems and how they could uh, relate to people's perception of stormwater for example and how that relates to local flooding. And the green roofs in Green Climate Apt um, that are developed uh, on the Augustin Botanical roof garden are primarily based on local material uh, using uh, different types of straw or fiber materials we're looking on recycled brick materials, uh, local soil, and um, also bio biochar. The idea in this project is to develop at least 600 square meters to see, to get a better idea on how these type of uh, systems will perform in the long run. Um, the research questionnaire is to develop more generic knowledge about how locally based uh, substrate will develop over time and how in turn that will relate to vegetation performance and uh, development. And some of these systems are also irrigated to investigate the effect of uh, irrigation on the cooling capacity of the installed. There have been a, a range of different roofs uh, developed over time. Um, first the image here shows some systems that are uh, based on, uh, on straw material using recycled roof tiles. Uh, the second image is a more pure inorganic material uh, that has been developed together with Ayako Nagase, looking on, on uh, more uh, how you could use work with annual vegetation on a more inorganic system. This image shows the, the latest installation of a green um, roof where the primar primary um, organic component is based on uh, rye, straw from, from rye, which has been seen as a more uh, stable organic component that will last a little bit longer as compared to other straw materials. Um, in the coming year there will also be some installations moving on uh, biochar as an alternative as an organic source in, within the within the substrate. Another quite large uh, research project that is uh, taking place not, not right, right now is the biodiversity, uh, a big research program that is uh, managed by the city of Malmö uh, together with a quite large number of different interest groups, companies and universities where we are primarily looking on how urban green can be used to support uh, local biodiversity. And in this work, we're looking at biotopes, small biotopes in urban areas. We're looking on how we can produce healthy street trees, green wall system, green roofs, mobile vegetation, and something called three-dimensional urban green. How you can install vegetation systems in a more free form in the urban landscape. So here we'll follow a short uh, information movie that has been produced, presenting some of the uh, research questions that we are working on now in our green wall project that has been set up uh, last summer. I varvstaden i Malmö pågår en febril aktivitet. Här monterar forskare från Malmö högskola och Sveriges lantbruksuniversitet ett par så kallade gröna väggar. Gröna väggar är husväggar med grön växtlighet som används bland annat för att försöna stadsmiljön och påverka klimatet in i staden. De gröna väggarna bidrar till ett bättre klimat särskilt om vi står inför en klimatförändring där vi har mycket mer 
intensiva och längre värmeböljor så kommer de gröna väggarna att mildra det. Det forskarna ska studera är hur väggarna påverkas i det svenska klimatet. Därför jobbar man med tre olika typer av testväggar med olika egenskaper. Vi står här framför demonstrationsväggen där vi kommer sätta upp våra små gröna väggar. Och min del i det här är att välja ut de växter som klarar av det här. Se vilka olika strategier de har som klarar det här klimatet bäst. De små gröna väggarna kan se ut på olika sätt. En variant är en modulbaserad modell. Det här är en mineralullsbaserad modul. Det är alltså mineralull här bakom. Och det här är odlade växter som man har i trädgården i princip. Det är de vi har testat här. Vi har testat vilda arter också. Och nu ska vi testa hur de klarar påfästningen och sitta på väggen. Mätningarna sker inne i huset med hjälp av sensorer som mäter temperatur, fuktighet och värmeflöde genom väggen. Vi vill bli bättre på att simulera matematiskt, fysikaliskt, vad som händer i en vägg som har grönska på utsidan. Och då innebär det att om vi kan göra bättre simuleringar så kan vi generalisera, då kan vi Se, hur skulle det månen gå om man hade den där typen av vägg istället? Och det är inte omöjligt att resultaten av projektet kan få praktisk användning i byggbranschen i en snar framtid. Jag tror definitivt att det, det kan vara aktuellt på väldigt kort sikt. Eh, lite av resultatet av det här kommer visa de positiva miljöaspekterna vi får. Det kan vara väldigt intressant att eh, ta till sig den byggtekniken i bostadsprojekt idag och göra dem lite grönare. So, as you saw in the short video, we will look on how a green wall will influence uh, urban climate. We're trying to uh, quantify the, the evaporation from the from the plants, the the water use, and uh, but we're also really interesting in developing more knowledge on system integration, how they will uh, change the performance of, of the building, if there will be problems with moisture, transfer between vegetation and wall, and to see, actually give a good, uh, good indication on will a green wall harm, harm the building or will it actually improve the performance. But of course we're also looking on questions like plant selection and winter survival. Finally, I will just tell you really briefly about the project I've been working on up until now. It's called the Green Roof System and it's a collaborative research project between uh, University of Sheffield and Cinco. And it's a, it has, it's a broad project trying to deconstruct the green roof and learn more about the performance of the individual components to be able to do better generalizations about uh, total green roof performance. So in this project we're looking on key components, uh, we're trying to see how we can develop uh, uh, sub-constructions that will uh, supply the vegetation with more water, we're looking on different substrate components, uh, trying to investigate how substrate will influence evaporation rates, and uh, to then finally create uh, total models looking on, uh, on the effect of these green roofs on storm. So this final slide is just a little uh, add to, to another event that's happening really soon. It's the Green Roof Research Conference that is due in Sheffield in the middle of March, which is a really interesting event, trying to bring together um, some, of the, some of the most talented researchers working on green roofs at the moment. It's, it's a, it will be a great event. And, uh, price for uh, the cost for attending is really low so i'll hope to see you in sheffield in march bye